So thanks to everybody who's taking part in these Power Query challenges. Thanks to Melissa and Vladimir and Umberto and uh, Nelson and everybody, okay? Thanks for submitting your challenges. Um, lots of different ways of tackling this. Hopefully I can share a bit of my knowledge. I also picked up a couple of tips, so, you know, we'll get into it. But we want to build a query in Excel that combines multiple Excel tables and have it be really flexible so that names can change, new tables can be added, and everything just continues to work. Okay, so flexible table consolidation. Let's go. So this is the scenario. We've got a number of tables. Um, we've got a region A table with some zones in. We've got region B with some zones in. I want to append these tables and also flip around the zones into one nice column using unpivot. I also want to be able to change these zones names whenever I want and add new tables whenever I want and just click a button and get a nice long table like this with all my data in. Okay, so building this manually and hard coding in the column names isn't too bad. You would simply click on this table from table slash range, click on the other table, the region B one from table, append them, okay, maybe unpivot, but it's not flexible. When columns change, things will break. When new tables get added, you've got to go and add them and append them. So this is the trick, okay? So I'm just gonna go um, get data from other sources, blank query. This then opens up a blank query. And the magical formula is equals Excel and dot current workbook, okay? This is how you grab the contents of the workbook but only tables and named ranges, not sheets, unfortunately. So this does involve tables, okay, or, or named ranges. Okay, so we've got the list of tables, great. Now, if we simply expanded this out and we say untick using original column name, otherwise the word content prefixes all the columns, that's great, it looks like it's worked. But what you've got to be careful of is your formula. You really need to look at this. These labels are now hard coded in. So if those column names get changed in the future, this will break. Okay, it'll stop and say cannot find zone A or whatever. So that's not what I need. Or if I add new zones, they won't get expanded. Now I did a little video on this um, previously about sort of avoiding referring to headings. Um, and actually there was a really nice little trick that um, Benedict, submitted, okay, so thanks to you. I quite like this approach. I might even, you know, use it over the other approach. Check this out, okay. If I go back to my source step and let's just click on the FX. I wanna grab the contents from here, okay. So I'm gonna click on the FX and go insert. Okay, so this will be called something like my headings. All right, so I wanna grab from the source, I want to grab <clears throat> from this table, if I click on it, you can see the headings are there. And then the second table, the headings are there. So I want to grab the headings from those tables. But what, what I could do is, is do a, like a com combine the tables and then grab the headings. So I've got sort of both sets. So if I do table dot combine, actually just before I do that, let me, let me show you this. If I say source, which is the previous step, and then square bracket content, okay, which is the name of that column, and press enter. Ooh, sorry, click on the end, press enter. Give it, give it a tick. Okay, this is my little list of tables now. Okay, and if I combine those, so table dot combine, combine, okay. That's now both tables combined, and I just want these headings. So table dot column names. So there's my list of headings, which is a simpler formula to remember than the one in my previous video that I did about this. So I like this, this is good. Okay, so there's my headings, right? My expanded content step is now broken because it's referring to the heading step. See, it's referring to headings here. I actually needed to refer to the source 
So you just type over that source. Okay. So that's now working, but these things being hard coded in, these are the things that I can now replace. So I can simply delete those and refer to headings instead. Okay, beautiful, dynamic. See, so whenever those column names changed, it doesn't matter. Right, the next thing I want to do is I've clicked on date and I've clicked on control click on name and I want to flip everything else around into columns and see all these nulls, watch what happens. Right click, okay, unpivot other columns. Now, it's great, it's awesome, I love unpivot, but it does get rid of nulls and you may well want that. Probably most of the time you do want that, but in this scenario, just to make things trickier, I want to keep the nulls. And the easiest way to do that is to replace values, replace the zeros, replace the nulls with zeros before you unpivot. So if I go back here, I need to sort of, you know, highlight all this data, right click, replace values, okay, then replace the nulls, lowercase, important, with zero, and click OK. But again, check this out. The columns are being referred to. And now the easiest thing here, if I don't really mind about the name column or the date column being changed as well, which they shouldn't be null, you know, there shouldn't be any nulls. So I don't really care about those. So all I do, again, replace this little curly bracket piece, okay, with the word headings. And again, it's then dynamic which is beautiful, okay? So from there, I can take the date column, I can take the name column, right click, unpivot other columns. Beautiful, okay, this is region, this is zone, and that can stay as value, that's date, and then I just change the types, date, that's text, that's text, that could be decimal number, whole number, whatever you want it to be, and we're pretty good. Last thing, oh, we need to sort by date, so sort ascending, then by region, I'll sort descending by region, just to be different, oh, and then zone, sort ascending, just to show you you can, okay, whichever way around you need to do it, all good. And you see the little sort icons here, the little sort numbers? So it does keep the sequence when you're using Power Query, it's not like Excel, where you sort one column and then you sort the other one, the other one sorts out, it actually keeps the sequence. So that's really it, okay? And we can say this is the um, consolidation. We're not quite done though, right? There's a little trap that I've built in. So let's load this. Close, close and load two. Let's load it to um, an existing worksheet as a table and I'll just drop it here and click OK. I think I may have sorted mine in a slightly different order. But look, oh, error. Okay, what's, what's going on? not quite working, and if I try and refresh this, it won't refresh. The reason is we've now added another table, so there's a bit of a circular reference going on because it's trying to append this table to itself, all right, so it freaks out. So we need to go back and filter out this consolidation table. So back at the source step, if I go to refresh preview, you see this consolidation table is now being brought in. There's a couple of ways of addressing this. You could simply right click at this source step and say text filter does not equal. Okay, that's the simplest way because then the consolidation table is gone and any new tables that get added. Or maybe you've got other things because range names will get picked up here. You could filter for everything that begins with region, you know, click on here and say text filter um, begins with the word region. So there's a couple of approaches. That will solve it. Um, one I liked from Vladimir was this little trick here. Essentially, to look for every table that has the word date in the first column, and if it doesn't, filter it out, which is pretty cool. I quite like that trick as an idea. So let me show you how, how that sort of worked. So, so you see the table here, there's date, it's in the sort of first column. So if we just go um, add column, custom column, and I insert this. And we could say um, 
table dot column names okay from the content column and actually only bring back the first one so curly brackets record zero in power query record zero is the first one and click OK yeah you're grabbing the first column name and if it's date we can filter it if it came out something different we could just then apply a filter here but text filter equals date and then delete that column and then you carry on with the rest of the process so that's some pretty awesome little tricks okay let me know what you think do you find that useful did you learn something new you know is this helpful let me just get rid of that little step here i am going to do it this way i'm going to say the source text filter does not equal consolidation all right and i down the bottom it's all working close and load and then this should work and whir away and it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter if i come over here and change you know this table to zone x it'll still refresh right click refresh okay there's zone x or even if i added an entirely new table called read some some other region let me put this over here okay control c control v here's another little table and we'll put in hello and abc as the column names okay and i haven't even named this table but it's over here called region b5 okay that's the name of the table come here right click refresh it just works which is awesome so hope you find it useful let me know what you think please subscribe more importantly tell people about this channel let people know if you find this useful others will as well thanks for watching thanks for taking part everybody really appreciate it and i'll catch you later